All right, a reminder, silence your cell phones, flash photography is prohibited. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, a limit of one follow-up. And we have Danny Sprinkle, Xavier Bishop, Nick Gazelis, and Raquan Battle. Uh, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Sprinkle. Hey, uh, first thing, I just want to say how proud I am of my team. And uh, I know, obviously, we didn't play our best today. And almost 100% of that has to do with Texas Tech. But what they've done for our university and how they've represented us in the Big Sky Conference, I couldn't be more proud of a group, a group of individuals that came together and really, uh, and really developed as a team. Um, tonight was, uh, I mean, this is the first time I've seen my play card all night. It felt like they were guarding me. I couldn't even see my play card. Like, they literally, that's the best defensive team in the country for a reason. Uh, they make every catch hard. They contest. They contest not only every shot, they contest every pass. And they made it really difficult for us. And when they start making threes, you know, I think they started the game, they made 10 of their first 14. I don't know if there's anybody in the tournament that's going to beat them if they shoot that ball that well. Because defensively, they don't have any weaknesses. Um, you know, even if you do make a good decision and a quick pass and you have a shot, the space is closed up so fast. And uh, I mean, it's, it's impressive on film, but you know, seeing that in person, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you. And I, uh, I wish I could have helped my players a little more, you know, designing some stuff to, to make stuff easier. But, you know, they've, they've done that to almost every Big 12 team, too, and teams across the country. So give them credit, man. They're unbelievably well coached, um, you know, and great kids. They were, they were a class act even after the game. And uh, I appreciated that. All right, we're going to open it up for questions for the student athletes only, and we'll start right here. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Xavier, kind of what you know your coach was talking about when it comes to seeing it on film versus seeing it in person. I guess just how different was that watching Texas Tech defense and the intensity and speed of it on film versus in person? Um, even on film, it looked great, you know. Um, but just being in person, I mean, <laughs> that's an elite defensive team. Uh, like Coach said, they have no weaknesses. I mean, their fives are able to guard, you know, small, fast guards like me, you know, and uh, they just make everything tough. Uh, that, that's what's kind of amazing about their defense. They make everything tough. Everything felt challenged. Feel like they they take you out of your sets and things you want to run, and they they just don't have many weaknesses. And um, they're well coached, disciplined. You know, they all know what they're doing, and uh, they're on the same page. But man, uh, that's a that's a great defensive team for sure. Coulter, New Orleans, Sky on Sports. Xavier, coming into this, obviously you guys know you're an underdog, but when they get off to a start like that, how hard is it to kind of try to seize momentum back? It, 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 it's tough. It's tough. But, I mean, in our huddle, we just kept saying, you know, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Uh, didn't have a great start we wanted. You know, they they were hitting shots, took us out of a lot of things. They they bought it for sure. And uh, But that's the thing about our team. We've just we've never laid down for anything, no matter how much we were down and uh, just whatever was going on. But yeah, it was definitely tough trying to, you know, find some momentum. And eventually in the second half, we kind of did get a couple stops. But, you know, that that's a great team. That's a great team, and uh, you know, kudos to them. Parker Cotton, Bozeman Daily Chronicle. For Nick and Raekwon, um, how valuable is the experience of playing on this stage going to be for players like yourselves and your teammates who are going to be returning to this program next year? Um, it's extremely valuable. Personally, I'm, I'm grateful, like eternally grateful for the opportunity I got to have, uh, especially just winning five games last year. We got 27 this year, you know, and just making it to the big dance. It's just, you know, I'm thankful, and you know, I'm excited for what's to happen in the near future. Uh, like Raekwon said, I'm very grateful to be here, uh, grateful for the experience and all this that it's shown to me, and I'm just, you know, ready for next year. Alex Eshelman, ABC Fox Montana. Uh, this one's for X. X, despite the loss, um, the way that you guys, you finished off your career this year with the Bobcats, um, what has this meant to you? Uh, it's meant the world to me. <laughs> it's meant the world to me. Uh, you know, I can't even explain sometimes what, you know, Coach Frank and our staff and just my teammates mean to me. Uh, you know, you know my past. I came from, you know, tough situation, you know, especially wins-wise and, you know, didn't have necessarily a lot of people believing in me, believing that I could be a point guard on a winning team, believe I could, you know, help a team be become, you know, something like this. And, uh, you know, definitely felt along the way. I'm proud of myself, you know, that I kind of did it. But, man, I just had guys believe in me, you know, and that's, 
that, 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 that's kind of just who I am. You know, when you got people that believe in you, you got to believe in yourself. You know, you feel like good things can happen. And, man, just, just this entire journey, this entire year has meant the world to me. And, you know, it made basketball fun again. You know, I, I truly enjoyed it, and I'll never forget it. And uh, we, left, we left our legacy. You know, no matter the outcome today, we left our legacy at Montana State. Any other questions for the student athletes? A follow up here and then in front. Um, Alex Ashelman, ABC Fox Montana. Where do you ex? Um, where do you think that um, this program can go from here? High, high as they want to take it. You know, uh, got a great core coming back. You know, great foundation. You know, uh, they the sky's the limit for these guys. I know. I see the work that they put in. I see the work that. Uh, our coaching staff puts in, you know, the effort, the time, and how they value us. And, you know, the young guys, they, they, this is definitely a learning lesson for them. You know, they got to enjoy the moment and enjoy the experience. But the goal was to win the Big Sky and get to the dance. Now the goal should be continue to be win the Big Sky, get to the dance, and now win a game, you know, win a couple games. And uh, we, if they just continue to keep doing what they're doing and what we do on a daily basis, the sky's the limit for this program. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be special. They'll, they'll be back for sure. Parker Cotton from Bozeman Daily Chronicle. I'll go back to Nick and Raekwon. You're, of course, losing X and Amon and uh, Abdul from this team. Can you speak at all to what their impact has been uh, on this program and in your guys' short time with it and kind of their impact on the season and helping you all reach this point of the year? Yeah, um, time's flying by. I feel like I just met these dudes, but like they're, they're, I love them to death. Like they're brothers to me forever, you know, especially what we've accomplished this year. You know, I, you know, I can call them whenever I want. Me and X had some deep conversation before already, you know. And that's why we're such a tight knit group. And with them going on, it just set, you know, the tone for, you know, me and uh, Nick G coming back next year, you know, just be the type of leaders they were. They inspired us to be, you know, some of the best players in the league. And not even that, when we made it to the big dance, some of the best players in the country, I should say. Uh, really, all it is is just following in their footsteps, you know, keep putting the work in that they put in, you know, just try to make them happy. <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, you guys can go. Thank you. And we'll continue with Coach Sprinkle. Colter New Orleans Skyline Sports. Danny, their intensity was so impressive, but so were they just physically. So their length, athleticism, how much did that disrupt you guys offensively? A whole lot and they've disrupted everybody they played against. It's, uh, it's tremendous, and like I said, when you see it in person and up close, their point guards are 6'6", 220, and long and athletic. Like, it's not a normal team, you know, but that's how their staff recruits for Coach Adam because that's the players he likes, and he gets, I mean, they're dogs. You know, they, they, they are literally as real as real gets, and there's no fake toughness, there's no fake chip on their shoulder, and, and for us, you know, I mean, they expose some of the things that we don't do well with our size or skill level and some of our passing. But, you know, they've done it to everybody. And, you know, it's hard. You know, you have to, you have to make some crazy shots against them. Um, but if they're shooting a the basketball like that, I'm telling you, like, there's not, there's not many teams in this tournament that's going to beat them if they're shooting that well offensively. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Dan, you just kind of touched on it. When they shoot 70%, that's going to be tough to beat. But when you were going through your game plan before this game, what was going to be the potential recipe to beat Texas Tech? You, know, you, you couldn't turn the ball over. You know, and I knew we'd struggle with it at times. I wanted to still be aggressive because I, I knew I didn't want our guys on our heels, which we were anyways. But you, know, you, you can't let them get easy baskets. You know, and I thought Shannon, when he started making some threes early, you know, that, that got them all the confidence they needed. You know, we had to do a really good job moving the basketball and trying to get it skipped because they load, they load so heavy to the ball side <clears throat> that the only thing open sometimes is a skip. But you got to skip it over two guys that are 6'6 and jumping jacks, you know. And so I knew that was going to be hard for us. And when we did, a couple times we got some decent shots, but they just react and play so hard that, you know, even if you're open for a split second, like you, you better make the right decision and you better make the shot. Parker Cotton, Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Danny, when you see, uh, you know, Nick hitting some shots, Raekwon hitting some shots, even Patrick McMahon in the second half getting some shots, how important was it to get some of those offensive contributions from guys outside of your, you know, your main core four? It was great, you know, and hopefully that, that builds some confidence in the off season. You know, I mean, every, you know, almost every player scored. You know, obviously Borja and Carter only got in the last minute, but other than that, everybody on the roster scored. Um, so I mean, it's huge. You know, I was really happy for Patty McMahon, and I've been, I've been telling people how good of a player he's going to be. You know, he just he's got upperclassmen above him that are good players. But 
Uh, I think with this spring and summer, like he's going to be, he could be an impact guy for us next year. I really believe that. And, uh, you know, great Osabar and Sam, like they played well. And Nick, you know, they, they competed. You know, they competed. As soon as Nick and Raekwon got in, I mean, they jacked up shots. You know, and that's what they do. And that's, that's what makes them good players. Colter Nuwana, Skyline Sports. Uh, how, how limited was Jabril uh, Bello today, if, if at all? He was very limited. You know, you, you guys or those that have seen our team, I mean, he's, he's a big 12 athlete, and I know he didn't look like it today. He's got no lift. You know, he hadn't practiced again all week. You know, just it's one of those he doesn't have his explosion, which is 90% of his game. And uh, especially when you're playing against, you know, big guys, you know, Williams and O'Banner, like Batchel, like, you have to have your explosion to be able to get those shots off, especially as physical as they are. And, you know, they, they made it hard on him. And, uh, I mean, I felt bad for him because, you know, he's probably playing at 50, maybe 60%. Coach, um, Alex Eshelman, ABC Fox, Montana. Coach, uh, looking back at this year and the success that you've had, what is, what you know, sitting up here, what has this entire season meant to you and your alma mater in the program? Yeah, I mean, it means everything. You know, I'm so happy for these players, like watching their face when they go in the locker room and the March Madness stuff, when they're walking out, I was purposely watching their face when they're looking in the arena. Like that's why when they're little kids, that's why they play. You know, that's why kids go division one is to play in this tournament. It's the biggest tournament in the world. You know, it's this and the Super Bowl. That's those are the two biggest sporting events in the world. And Montana State's a part of that. And, you know, for Bobcat Nation back home, you know, I know they were all watching on TV. You know, the support they've given us this year and the energy they've given us, the fans are back in the field house, like the energy's back, the excitement's back. And now we have to, you know, we have to continue to build on that. You know, we have to still do a really good job recruiting to replace some of these seniors. And we gotta, we gotta kind of keep the culture and, and, the, and the toughness that we've had. You know, we've gotta, we've gotta continue to take steps. Oh, you gotta follow up there. It follow up there and then up. Alex Eshelman, ABC Fox, Montana. The three seniors, uh, what will you miss most about the, the three and what have they brought to the success of this program? Yeah, I mean, I already cried enough in the locker room. I can't, like, they believed in me when nobody else did. The only people that believed in me before that was my mentors and Wade Cruzado, our president, and Leon Costello. You know, nobody, I didn't have an interview anywhere else to be a head coach, not a junior, co nowhere. And they took a chance on me. Those three kids took a chance on me, you know, and I couldn't be more appreciative. I mean, their family for life, what they've done to kind of reinvigorate Montana State basketball uh, on and off the court. I mean, I could, I could never, there's not enough words. There's not enough money. There's nothing, there's not enough of anything that could express my gratitude and thanks to them for what they've done, not only to me, to my staff, the city and their teammates. Final question. Parker Cotton, Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Denny, you've talked a lot about your vision since you took this job three years ago of winning the Big Sky and reaching this tournament. Does your vision of the program growing from here get easier or tougher now that you've actually attained this part of your vis initial vision? No, it gets tougher now. You got a bullseye. You know, it gets tougher. But that's, as a competitor, that's what you want. Texas Tech's had a bullseye on them all year. Every single team tries to score on them, you know, and they don't allow it. And, you know, I'm more motivated than ever. Literally, I want to go recruiting right now. I want to watch this. I want to see what we have to do better. I want to, I want to put our plan and our weight room together right now. You know, our young guys, I said, I hope you saw what kind of bodies those guys have, what kind of athleticism. That's what we have to do. That's the level. That's the highest level of Division One. That's where I want to get to. And, you know, all this does is motivate me more. Like, I'm not one, and you know, like, I, I don't get satisfied. You know, even if we'd have won today, I'm not be, I wouldn't be satisfied. There's something always you can do better, and, and we've got to continue with that attitude to take this program to new heights. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. Press conference will be available. NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com, and there will be transcripts posted shortly. Thank you.